Okay, so this is day five of this small bathroom remodel. As you can see, I got my waterproofing up. So I'm gonna go over a bunch of tips about what I did when I was installing this, and we're gonna go ahead and waterproof this uh, live as well. So the Weedy system. So they just use these washers and screws to install every 12 inches. Couple of things you wanna note about this is number one, the first set of screws, you wanna be 12 inches off the floor. Main reason for that is you don't wanna be sinking this board deeply into uh, and pulling it away from the base. So as you remember, the base had a, a rabbit joint that this slides into. So if you were to put a screw here and say that the stud wasn't all in line with another, it can push that bottom part of this board out of that joint. So always stay 12 inches above the floor. Another thing that you wanna pay attention to is when you're, off, when you're putting screws in the corner, you wanna offset them. So there's one screw here, one screw here. You wanna offset them. You don't want them to have them in the same exact spot because again, you could be pulling that board away from that corner. Um, and then as far as the sealant goes, we're just using the weedy sealant. Always use the sealant for the system that you're using. Um, but we're just gonna cover over all the screws and you basically wanna have one inch reveal around all edges and then along your seams as well. And we're gonna address a couple other areas here shortly, um, show you the proper way to go about doing that. So there's two different types of sealant. Uh, the, weed, the traditional weedy sealant, um, you can also get it in a sausage tube, makes it a lot easier and faster. Um, but I have this weedy 620 sealant. This is a more fluid sealant. These are for bands and subliner. I'll show you, I'll be installing that live here as well. Um, but the 620 sealant is just a more fluid sealant. Um, but if you're a contractor, I highly recommend you get the big sausage tubes rather than all these smaller caulking tubes. You're gonna save yourself money and it's just gonna be less work with the, the bigger gun. So, so we'll just start with the corners. Basically you're putting a big generous bead all the way along this corner, every each corner. Um, now this shower is about three by four and I had purchased 10 tubes of this sealant. You probably could get away with probably four of the sausage tubes. So I'm gonna go back over each one of these little bigger screws. And then it's really helpful is to buy one of these corner trials. This is weedy, so when you order your system, just buy one of these. And this just makes it really easy to make it nice and tight in the corners. So what you basically want one inch reveal on either side of the joint. And we'll go back over a couple areas that we need the sealant on those screws, but we'll go ahead and finish our corners first. So get about a good half inch bead. So you can see how, how fast these tubes go. That's where having the bigger ones are, are nicer. I guess I could have prepped all these ahead of time. I will. This caulking gun I got is pretty nice though. This is made by Newborn. It's the 290 model. It's made for sealants like this. I don't know. I mean, I, it's very responsive. It's not really killing my hand. So getting a decent caulking gun is kind of nice. And yeah, just take your corner trowel. get that embedded again I'll be going over a couple of these screws in the corner with the flat trowel here shortly but then each seam you want to get a like a half inch bead and you can just dot every one of these washers Same here. So a very simple installation. Doing the weedy system here. Okay, that's already going too. Have you used aqua? 
Liquid yeah. Adding yeah, the, the uh, liquid membrane. Yeah, that's the good stuff made by Mape. Um, you know, the one thing, uh, alcohol defense is great. Um, I tell you what, I, if I were to do a liquid membrane, I would probably stick with Hydroban. And that's just because it dries so nicely and so quickly. I've had Aqua Defense take, I mean, the next morning, but there were sometimes the corners would be still kind of dark green. And um, it's just because it didn't dry. But Hydro Band, man, like in an hour, I could go ahead and put that second coat on. Um, so Laticrete uh, Hydro Band, I'm a real big fan of. But yeah, Aqua Defense is definitely a good system. But you can't, you can't really beat, I mean, in my mind, as far as speed goes, using these, these foam boards, I mean, they're just, they're just so quick, quick to install. Jacob Confer, so you prefer the weedy system over the Schluter system? Um, not necessarily. It depends on what situation I'm in. Um, if I'm really questioning where my drain location is, I'll go Schluter because you can modify those pans pretty easily. Um, Schluter, I mean, first off, I like their drains better than Weedy. I'll just say that. I think their drain covers are much more flexible to meet up with the tile. Um, you have more of a pitch right at the drain location, so you have more ability to move that drain and get it perfect with your tile. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I love it, but I mean, for a curbless shower, um, this is gonna be the fastest way doing this Weedy system. Um, it just simply is because it's three quarters of an inch thick. The Schluter pans, the new, the new pans that they came out with are one inch. So you have to get like a quarter inch material on the outside to meet up with that to make that. If, if you can only take the subfloor out. If you take the subfloor out, you, you get that three quarter inch, but the pans are one inch thick. So you have to put down like Dietra heat or, you know, they make um, Dietra XL, which is a quarter inch thick, or you could even... I mean, honestly, in a small bathroom like this, you could just do two layers of Dietra to meet that up. So that, that's where it becomes a little problematic with the Schluter pans. Um, but there's a lot of situations I would prefer Schluter, and that would be just not knowing where my drain location is. And maybe there's something funky that you need to, you know, even like a Neo angle something, I would probably go with Schluter because it's just so versatile. If I'm like, I mean, even if you screwed up the pan completely, you could still pack it with mud. Not that you can't do it with the weedy system, but they, um, you know, you have to buy all this other stuff to, to be able to do that. Where Schluter, I mean, you're probably going to have the Curdy membrane and all that other stuff anyways. Um, but, you know, all intents and purposes, Schluter would be cheaper than weedy. I mean, not by a whole lot, a few hundred dollars. I mean, that's, that's I guess that's a lot on a three by four shower. So, you know, it does save money but this weedy board compared to Schluter board I'd go this all day long this is so much more rigid um, again there's a lot of better benefits I can I can nick it as long as my my blade doesn't go all the way through the board it still stays waterproof that's also kind of nice if I'm running tile and say my joints weren't hundred percent even I could take my grinder after the tile is set and just zip it up and cut it all nice and I don't have to worry about the waterproofing because as long as I don't go all the way through I'm in good shape. Um, whereas Schluter, you nick the membrane, that's it. I mean, you're going to have to um, redo it. So, um, and then, you know, if you're at, especially like the floor, the floor on a Schluter pan, um, you know, they, they made, they made the foam um, more durable, but you could still kneel on it with your knees and just indent it. And then um, that can be a problematic you know, for many different reasons. Um, water would probably always sit in that divot. If you did marble or stone, your, your stone could always look wet in that area because there's water saturation in the divot. So um, there's a couple things about Schluter that I'm, I think they can do better. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, great system. I've obviously, I've done an awful lot of Schluter. Um, but yeah, this is just, <laughs> This is just a little bit easier with the sealant, you know. I'm just, I'm just spreading it over these screw holes rather than taping everything, you know. And some people don't like thin set either. 
I mean, obviously if you're tiling a shower, you better get used to thin set, but uh, it is a lot more work to, with painting over that. So I've got this. Where? Oh. Um. So then the corners, same concept. Uh, now it was really important to get like a really decent half inch bead of sealant in that rabbit joint. And uh, I'll be having videos on this later, but one of the one of the key points about it is, is is putting that board in at a 45 degree angle and then pushing it forward so that that sealant oozes out of this joint. So then we're going to put a valve trim on here. So this is a valve seal. It has two edges on it. So one has a big rubber spacer on the back that goes into the board. And then um, you can thin set it, which you can do it both two ways. So I'll just do it both ways here. So you can do the, the 620 sealant. That's what this is. So you can see how much more fluid that is than the, and then you just take an eighth by eighth inch trial. And then you just put this on there. Let me just make sure that. Yeah, there we go. And then you can also use stain set. That would definitely be the cheaper option. Now we've got some thin set mixed up because we're gonna do the subliner for the floor and there's a really important aspect about that you need to pay attention to. But we'll... I have a thin spread of moms. So I was wondering where you went after home repair too. You did all the labor work and always explained very, very detail on how to do bathrooms from one contractor to another. Oh, well thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much I should say or not say about that, but uh, yeah, just get things in writing. You know, I've been working with him for seven years. I took him to every one of my job sites, basically taught, well, I mean, he's a smart guy, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, uh, you know, I really, I really helped grow that channel and get everything going. And once we got things in writing, he had different opinions about who owned things. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of why I'm starting my own thing. It's, at, at first, I was just going to be like, you know what, I'm just going to go back to contracting. I'm not going to do any more of this video. But I did spend seven years being in front of this camera just trying to teach things. So that's why I'm doing this. I mean, I, I enjoy it. And then obviously, I can see a real future in um, teaching. We, we need new tradesmen. I mean, we really do. I don't, any job site I go on anymore, I don't see 20-year-olds. I see everyone my age. I'm 42. Everyone is older. Um, so we need a new... We need a new lifeblood of contractors out there to fix up a lot of the crap that they've been building. Um, you know, I'm sure if you're a contractor, you know some of these new builds. I mean, they're just absolute crap the way they're putting a lot of them together. There are some good builders, don't get me wrong, but they're just sliding by with a lot of the cheapest quality stuff that they can do. And um, one of the areas is, is the bathrooms. I mean, I can't tell you how many fiberglass units that are cracked in the bases and people are... You know, they just bought the homes three years ago and they have to replace their bathrooms. It's, it's disgusting. So we need tradesmen. So that's kind of why I'm here is to help pass on some of the knowledge, I guess, you know, or methods. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm still learning every day. So, I mean, I'm not saying I, I know everything. And certainly don't try to portray that I do. Um, you know, and then all, a lot of these newer um, 
contractors out there they're doing all this TikTok, youtube i mean they're really helping out a lot i think um i shouldn't say all of them but uh you know it's definitely awesome i wish i would have had youtube and all this stuff when i 20 years ago it, it would have i wouldn't have had to learn everything the hard way um because all they could do is go to home depot and ask some questions there and you know just there wasn't you know i went to trade school i went to trade school for two years I ain't gonna teach you a thing about waterproofing. I, I mean, I went over a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of electrical, learned how to do some CAD programs. But really, once I left, left college after two years of trade school, I mean, I didn't know anything. I mean, I really didn't. It's, uh, I, I think it gave you a little bit of confidence just because you went to school and you understand how to read a tape measure and different things like that. But it really didn't do anything for specialty stuff. Um, and I, it really took me eight or nine years after starting my business, I started in 2000. And then that's when um, I really just started getting into bathrooms because for a while, a business reason. I mean, your bathroom is the most expensive um, place in your house per square foot, no question about it. I mean, your kitchen's expensive, but your bathroom per square foot, no doubt is the most expensive. And everyone has more than, most people have more than one. So my thoughts were, I'm gonna get into this business because if I do one bathroom, They'll most likely call me back for the second one and it's less running around and it really did work out that way um, not only that but you get the pictures you get these great pictures of what the finished product that's all everybody wants to see they don't want to see a door installed who cares you know um, it's the tile work that sells so if you're ever thinking about getting into a business that uh, is profitable and really easy to just get your name out there it's it's bathrooms and tile work because everybody loves seeing it you can be really creative with it um and it's really in high demand so you know i would definitely you know skip the two hundred thousand dollar you know loan debt to go to college and <laughs> become a tradesman that's you know my advice i guess so this this guy they don't make a, a valve trim for these diverters i don't know why i mean they, they make all these valve trims schluter doesn't even make one for these Everyone had, not everyone, uh, most people have a diverter for a handheld. So anyways, all I did was just cut a little slit on either side of this. And what I'll do is after done tiling, then I'll just cut more of this around. But this will help give a little bit more waterproofing around this area. This seam is where I would use, they make a, a, the weedy band and you can use that or you can, if you're doing the subliner, you can just cut strips of this, but basically just go two inches on either side of, of this drywall seam. And what will end up happening is this is gonna stick outside of my tile area. I'm doing that purposely because I want everything from my tile in to be waterproof. And then what I'll do is just after I set the tile, I'll just use some drywall mud and feather over it, just like it was paper tape. So it's pretty easy. So I'm using the eighth by eighth inch trowel. You can, uh, you can use that weedy um, 620 sealant for this joint as well. But obviously a thin set is gonna be cheaper. So I would just probably just advise doing that. You can see how loose this mix is. So I wouldn't be setting tile with that. Um, but I would, you know, it's great for the membranes because you just want to make sure, you know, that you're getting the bond on the back. We're gonna put the subliner down. So like any any installation of tile, you wanna wipe down this subfloor with a damp rag. And this keeps that thin set from wicking out immediately. But it also, you know, make sure you have a clean subfloor. But this, uh, 
you don't want that thin set to immediately get zapped of moisture. Okay, and then what I'm gonna use is a quarter by quarter trial. That's what they want you to use for the sub, sub liner. So, but first, can you see this? You can see the floor pan fine, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so one of the most important parts of this is to uh, use the 620 sealant, okay? Any, the sub liner that we're using, any overlapping on the weedy or the subliner itself, you want to use the 620 sealant and very, very important for a curbless shower. So we want to make sure that this extends over this shower pan by four inches. And that's, that's the requirement of, of weedy there. So put a fair amount on the pan and we're just going to overhang it. But what, you know, basically right where the shower is, I'm going to use the weedy sealant as well, but I'll probably just use thin set on the rest of the drywall. But what I'm going to do is wrap it up the wall as well, because this is a real critical area, especially right around in here with a curbless shower. You want to make sure that this is all waterproof between the wall and the floor as well. So we'll just use the sealant on the pan. And then we'll just use a, the eighth inch by eighth inch trowel and trowel this. This doesn't spread all that great when the, when the uh, surface is wet. It's not gonna, not necessarily gonna hurt the bond, but it's definitely nicer when this, everything's dry. You just have to be a little bit more di diligent at getting this into the, to get a nice coat on this, when the, if, if you have any wetness to it. Okay, so I got that part down. And with a quarter by quarter, I'm gonna use the thin set. So you could see how soupy this thin set is. So whatever the wettest ratio of the thin set you're using is what you wanna do. Because then you'll make sure that you have a good bond with your substrate. So use the back side of the trowel and key it into the subfloor. And what that's gonna do is obviously make sure you have a good bond but it also makes it a lot easier to spread your thin set and get a nice uh, trial lines. You know, if you just try to do that right on regular subfloor, it usually doesn't come out all that well. So key it in. Tell you what, this is so much nicer not having that floor vent. I really hate those things. And this is really gonna be a lot nicer not having to walk around that. Yeah, I tell you what, um, doing a small bathroom you know, I, I get so many calls about it and everyone says, I just have a small bathroom. And I tell you what, it's, it is, it's just as much work as any of the bigger ones in my mind. This one in particular, I'll have a lot of videos on and you'll see the kind of trouble I came up with. But boy, I mean, it was just one thing after another. And, you know, I think the reason, part of the reason it's just more difficult is because it is small and then there's another bathroom on the other side. So it has so much plumbing and electric and Anything you touched needed to be moved. So it's um, small bathrooms. They might be small and you might think, hey, it shouldn't cost that much. <laughs> but uh, there's usually a lot of work in them, unfortunately. That's why, uh, you know, hopefully if you do it yourself, you could save yourself a pile of money and not have to go through the pain of hiring somebody. So just make sure that this is going over four inches onto your pan. I'll just, I'll just cut around this kind of wild because I, I got a, another piece that I want to waterproof. It'll be just easier to waterproof with another piece over top of this. Okay, 
So I just got like a wood float. So you just want to. <laughs> yeah. So you can see here, this is good coverage. It's not bad to pull this back. Just take a look at it. I obviously got to get it up against the wall here. So I'll just get a little bit of... Yeah, there is a lot of things. And you know, the other thing, I mean, this is small, but you know, I'm going to towel this floor probably in an hour or something when I get to it. But I can't do anything else for the rest of the day until that floor dries. So there's, there's, a, there's a certain element of waiting on some of this stuff so to me it's like you know you're charging to me you know i don't know what other contractors do but i charge by whatever the day is i don't care how many hours i'm working i if i have to allot a day to just set this floor then that's what i'm charging um and it doesn't matter whether i'm here for an hour or i'm here for four hours it, it matters by the day because i'm not going to schedule anything else out um you know if you're really confident with yourself you can go running around doing all this stuff, but I think set up, um, you just don't know, especially when you're moving things or whatever, things always become more problematic. So I go by the day. Now this particular project, I was hoping that I could, typically I, I outline it for like seven days, um, but with the amount of plumbing issues that I had here in the electrical, it, it definitely set me back. Um, but you know, even the uh, tomorrow, I wanna set the shower floor and get this back wall up and I, and I always recommend to do your shower floor first. It depends on what you're using. Um, if you're using like pebble stones or something, you can do that afterwards. But most other tile two by twos, whatever it is, I recommend doing that floor first because you want to keep that expansion contraction joint around your perimeter of your tile. And then the wall tile will overlap it. And plus, I think the grout joint on the vertical surface, meeting the tile to the floor, looks much better than looking straight down at a grout joint and you certainly will spend less time, you know, um, putting the shower floor tile down first because you know you're, it's gonna be overlapped by that wall tile. So it just makes the whole thing in easier. But what I'm gonna do is, because I don't wanna just come in here and just uh, do some drywall mudding and just do the shower floor, I wanna be able to tile this back wall as well. So I'm gonna get some rapid set, thin set for the shower floor so I can walk on it and. And work work with it so um i guess i'm just saying that it's because in a normal situation all i'd be able to do is work for an hour or two tomorrow and then wait for everything to set up okay so all right so i got this a little too high i would just wrap this up i want to have this uh membrane up enough to obviously create waterproofing, but uh, I want I want the baseboard to cover it over it as well. So, but this is a real critical area. You know, I mean, I would say at the very least, just come out, and um, I think most of the manufacturers are going to recommend that is to come out uh, at least three foot for waterproofing of that. But I don't see any reason why you wouldn't just finish off the rest of the bathroom and just use this because this is also a uh, what they call an isolation membrane so so basically this is basically separating the layer of the plywood with the tile because plywood expands and contracts and so this um, you know by their science specifically is is uh, separating that so then you should have a longer lasting floor going over something like this or DITRA or um, any of these other isolation membranes. So. <laughs> Making a, uh, a little seal for around here. Put a little of the sealant around the pipe. And when I push it down into it, then you really are sealing this to the pipe. Because now you won't have any issues if that toilet overflowed, if you had a 
problem. So now you're should be in good shape. So where you layer layer the uh, the sub liner, you want to use this 620 sealant. And then I'm just using that eighth inch trowel. So you just need to overlap it by two inches. <clears throat> 